will potentially like September when the drones come back. This will be last week, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't worry, the names will be They don't worry about the gates, all the bees gone. So. And they won't go until after we finish, so. Yeah, definitely. Do not worry, you will not be locked in. <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting some money on Monday night and I went down to see what Quidditch was like. Oh, yeah. There's no Quidditch, it's all um, netball. Quidditch? Oh, the netball. Oh, the Quidditch, yeah. <laughs> That's a daytime game, not evening. Oh, yeah. Um, where the, the dependents, it's too windy, the ball is too light and they can't play. Oh, right. um, so, uh, yeah. Oh, so, what do you think? Mutant. Oh, 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 I was going to say that they are always there. They are daytimes, but not evenings. Oh, I see. Oh, my. It's the next day. It's daytime. It all takes over in the evenings. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. I expect you to get through this back at about 7 to that channel. Well, we went to the start, see? Eh? We can start whenever you're ready. Oh, we're ready. Oh, we're ready. Oh, oh, so I thought um, we were waiting for you. Well, 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 theoretically, yes, but I mean, we are. I think it's past 7 now, isn't it? Past yeah. Seven. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. well, welcome everybody uh, to the planning and uh, environment committee. Um, emergency evacuation procedure in the event of a fire alarm, a fire drill, or other emergency, signaled by the continuous sound of a bell, please exit from the room via the exit door indicated. And Doors to run in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and assemble at the meeting point in the car park area. Uh, filming a uh, strict recording of the meeting in line with the openness of local government bodies regulation 2014. This meeting may strict will be filmed and strict recorded by the town council strict members of the public. Um, the first point on the agenda is uh, submissions from the public, um, which we will have 15 minutes um, to talk about if there's any members of the public joining today. Uh, chair, chair. Yeah. Can I raise a point as a member of the public? Me. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. You know, our doctor surgery, the Brookway Activity Centre. We have a piece of land over there, which is about the <coughs> the car park, and um, which is on the the site. So <coughs> there was a basketball. Once upon a time, a basketball hoop there, but I think and I don't know whether that's be there. I just want to know whether it will be a possibility to install a basketball court in that area. So because uh, youth and people, as well as people who love basketball, we don't have a proper basketball court there. As well as there's a lag right now to get the MUGA, our multi-use games area, installed. So many people have been requesting that, so I would like to uh, kind of submit this proposal so that in future we can actually add that as a module for the strategic planning. And so that's one part. So thank you. That's it. Thank you, Tom. Um, I'll just uh, refer to a more knowledgeable body here. Um, is that something that we would discuss here, or is no, that no, no. We, it, it can, councillors can discuss that at next week's repeated time? Okay, okay. I'll, uh, this is just not because of people, members of the public being requesting, so I would like to raise that as a member of the public on behalf of the public. Okay, please carry on. Okay, all right, okay, thank you. Um, the second point is to receive any apologies for absence. Yes, I have apologies from Councillor Tony Griffith. Mm -hmm. 
Point three is declaration of five members under the Local Government Act 1972. I don't believe there are any. Number four, announcements by the chair. There are no, no, no announcements uh, that I want to make. Um, point five is to confirm the minutes of the meeting, the 22nd of July 2020, as a correct record. That was then proposed and Michael seconded? Yeah. <coughs> you take a vote on that, please, Councillor. That's unanimous, thank you. There is no second. July 2020, not covered elsewhere on the agenda. And uh, 6.1 is hinge point on shared bookway, pedestrian strip cycleway, um, South West District Council local transport priority list to COVID 19 social distancing. That's just a quick update to say, um, as requested after the last meeting, um, we sent a letter to the South Cross Bradley Stoke North Ward councillors um, and ask them to forward it on to the relevant officers and councillors in South Cross Council. Um, but asking for a permanent solution to the pinch point problem as of yet, I haven't heard anything back that we've done much before. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Do we leave that on the agenda for Yes, yes. Well, well, these things can take several years if it's going to be a long term solution. Mm -hmm. so. But yeah, we will keep it on. Mm -hmm. I will chase it up. Do you get an actual um, uh, notice of the pinch point problem? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we can do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
have here. You see that? It's this house here. So it's to convert the existing garage to form additional living accommodation. So there's no change in the footprint then? Uh, sorry? No change in the footprint? No. So we have the physical combined plans. We just rotate some of it. Okay, so you can see what is there at the moment, which is the top, and you can see what is proposed that it's taking away the uh, okay. conservatory and essentially putting in. Yeah, so that's where the garage is on the side over here. Uh, there's just going to be like a small garage sort of store area there. So, um, very hard to place that, very box standard. Yeah, yeah, there was a um, comment from sustainable yeah. transport. Yeah. Sorry? Uh, so, the conservatory of being demolished, nothing. Yeah, no, one is there. Yeah, so um, sustainable transport were actually querying the fact that the um, block plan didn't show where the parking was, but they have resubmitted so that okay, the plan now shows where the car parking will be. Yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking for that now, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I should think you've closed the Yeah, I Second with that, sir. Sure. Do you want to do a vote on that? Are yes. those in favour? I couldn't see. <laughs> the point is because I'm using a cord, so I couldn't see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me a minute while I just open everything in one go, so that's that one. You're definitely getting the hang of this now, aren't you? <laughs> takes such a long time to set everything up in the first place. You just share it. So I'm training it. What do you mean by share everything? The screen, when you do the screen sharing, it says sharing the little bit there. It's more about sharing the whole screen to move around so you can see everything. Is that what I'm doing? Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just wondered whether you say saying there was something else that should be doing. No, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. So, yes, this one. So, this is P20 12249 Installate F. Installation of four chili units, direction of a three metre high perimeter fencing and associated works, unit two, Bristol Distribution Park, Hawkey Drive. So, it is this edge bit on here. Um, this diagram. So, um, what do you mean? I can keep more of these if you want. There's no comments from what there's actually no houses up there. So. It is quite close to Woodlands, though, isn't it? Is it the other side of the edge? I couldn't see if it was going to do anything. It's a giant thing. Like so. That's what's 
در مریمت Right. So you can see what you can say. And then you've got that bit there, and then Willem's line, and then Willem's there. But there's no comments from anybody when I check today. What about from the transport or other people, the trains? Um, there was the same transport. I've got no problem on that one. On the aerial photograph we saw right at the beginning, it looked as though there was quite a bit of car parking down that bottom right hand corner. There? Yes. Yeah, so it is, yeah, it is sort of this, this sort of bit of stuff along the edge here. There. <coughs> so. Oh, really? there. Yeah. there. I'm putting new ones in. But, so the transport people doesn't have any problem losing of the car parking area? Well, they're not. There's no car parking area going because mm -hmm. it's actually attached to the buildings. It's mm -hmm. the, uh, so the perimeter fencing is obviously going to go all the way around the site. And then the external two unit, uh, there are some there already. So there's existing, I think. No, that's the chain link fence, isn't it? Here. So existing cold water storage tank to be removed, existing cooling tower to be removed and replaced with the chiller. So they're taking that as well. Is this one green coal? Which company is this? It's a distribution centre, isn't it, I think? No, I think it's a BT. Oh. Helicon's switch site. Oh, very good. Five switch rooms, a transmission room, and an ONC data room. Hmm. Two existing cooling towers to the side of the building, which are going to be removed and replaced with four external chillers. Two of the new chillers will be placed onto the existing cooling tower bases to the side of the building, and the other two of the chillers will be seated on new plinths, which are to be cast on the existing yard slab on the front of the building. So, the existing cooling towers have been surveyed and found to be reaching the end of their useful life. The existing two cooling towers also are an ongoing risk in terms of Legionnaires' disease. It's therefore been decided to prevent any environmental problems in the future to remove the two cooling towers and replace them with four chillers. The new chillers are more energy efficient than the cooling towers, which will be a benefit to the environment. The acoustic consultancy is attached to the document, shows no additional acoustic mitigation measures are required. This will be because the site is located very close to the M5, which is relatively noisy at all times. No objection. Ben's happy to propose and I'm consistent with the proposal. No objection proposed by Ben and seconded by Chair. We're going to do a vote on that, councillors. All those in favour? Yeah, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. The next one is P20 12234F. Direction single story rear and side extension to form additional living accommodation at 243 Almond's
is what is there at the moment and that is what is proposed. Yeah. It's a big dome, is it? Side as well as right here. Yeah, so it's mainly at the back with a little bit on the side. I, I give you the how's that um, how close is that the building next door that made well, because they're quite set back, aren't they? Like driving past Yeah, the, so there's the site location and the block plan. Mm, so it's very close, yeah. It is there, you can see from that one, so they are no, quite no. Any, any comments from neighbours? No, no. From neighbours, there's a comment from Sustainable Transport, I think it is. Yeah, it does say um, Sustainable Transport says it's difficult to assess from, uh, assess from the details submitted the existing parking arrangements for the site. It would appear that the second car parking space proposed is outside the red edge of the site. Clarification on this is requested. So, yeah, if you look on here, they've got like the red edging of the site goes there. That's right, we also felt so. Yeah. Parked on there. And then if you look on the, if you look on the existing, you can see that, that this line comes straight down here. Yeah. Then on the proposed, the line sort of goes through the middle of the car. Yeah. Yeah. Chair, I just want to actually raise a point that it's kind of an overdevelopment. So I like to object to that. It's actually a bit oversized. So because it's coming to the parking as well, so that's what my hindsight is, just by the prime office. Quite a bit there, and then going around there, yeah. So it creates, it means everything you want to pop, but there. Yeah, yeah. It, it will sort of, yeah, so it will come out obviously to here and then go back like behind but it's been it's been in the system since the 27th of july and there's no comments from any of the neighbors or can i just put a point in um, about three or four meetings ago we looked at that house and up close which was putting a side extension right on the boundary and um, we objected and we got overruled by south Boston. You said yes, it was acceptable. And this might be a parallel case being building right up to the side of the actual land. I can't actually see that there are any real planning uh, reasons for not, not agreeing to it. it. It's similar to what uh, Mike has just said. Yeah. There is actually, there is a bit of a gap still left there so they're not going right up to the edge of that 
a boundary. Mm -hmm. The river Hyde Park, yeah. on the left hand side of the car, what who owns that? There, yeah. Um that would that would be like a uh, land? like a yeah, like um general use yeah for anybody. Turning mm -hmm. circle I guess and potentially pulling because you can look on but this it, it's one. A little cold, so yeah, so it's there. So there's so like parking those and turning those on and other cars which to the left of that then even. It can be another people's property. But it's, it's definitely a narrowing of that gap into mm. that area. Mm. But whether it's narrowing, whether that's really a people because bounds on their property anyway is going to be somewhere. It's what it's where that plan is confusing because they've now put that half part outside of their boundaries. Yeah, so that's that's on, the yeah and which is what sustainable transport query and, and then on the road. Should we perhaps uh, say we have no objection subject to there being quite on the items? Well, I think mean, I, mean, I would like to see better argument and truths. And is it possible to defer it and can we say that we want um well we certainly want the um the um Transport people to be responsible. Well, I, you can't really. I don't think we can defer it for another month because we've already had an extension. Because oh. we had to comment within 21 days, and they've given us an extension. Because actually, we're well over 21 days now. But we could, we, you could be, you could have no objection subject to something, or you could object to it on the grounds that there wasn't enough. No, the parking situation wasn't clear, it wasn't clear, so you know, you, there's sort of a couple of choices really. Uh, mm. Yeah, I would like to object to it because uh, one is over development and uh, there's no d detailed information regarding that parking issue. So, is there anybody? Yeah, okay, yeah. so that's uh, yeah. over development of site and insufficient. Information to clarify parking provision. Yeah, that's. So that was so that was common proposed and then seconded. Council, can you take a vote on that one, please? One, two, three, four, five in favour. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Ask a quick question then. Mm -hmm. If anybody else was trying to join the meeting now, I can't see that, can I? It should pop up and say that some ways. Oh, it should be okay with that. I just wanted that. Sorry. She's asking me a question on that sort of Okay. I can see you, Ben. Where are you? Um, I'm sat to the right, right here that's waving. He's further <laughs> The next one then is P20 12778 BLP, the erection of single storey rear extension at 70 Meadow Way. So it is this house here. We can't get your street view because obviously it's the back of the house. Mm. 
No es que porque criticaron. Porque ya está muy triste, pero no sabéis. So that is what is there at the moment. So that is what is there at the moment then. You've got like this. Extend a bit on the living room and then the conservatory. And that is what was proposed for getting essentially getting rid of the conservatory and the end. On there. I can't see any reason to object to that. No, I don't think it's a good idea, actually. Screen, they did just as well have gone right the way across the back. A bit weird, isn't it? It didn't go right to the edge along here. Yeah. Okay. So, the elevation. Uh, that is what's there at the moment. And I just want to put that on instead. Would have made much more sense to have gone straight across, wouldn't it? No, definitely. Yeah. I suppose it breaks up because it's a little bit apparent. Might be the cost factor. Yeah, it could be, could not it? Yeah. That's, uh, this is a very simple one, is it? Cons they're transforming the conservatory to an um, extension. Yeah. Which I feel, which is really good. I think uh, nothing more than I'm happy to be proposed accepting it. Do you have any other uh, issues from other councillors? I wait. Conservatory was really popular when back to state first happened. They popped away with the next. Then 25 years later, they reached the end of their shelf time. And everybody's getting ready for the conservatory and having this. Single okay. story room really extensions instead. Yeah. 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 So Tom proposed no objection. For a second for that? Michael? Can you take a vote, please, councillors? Thank you very much. That's unanimous. Yeah. 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 I also think that it's So the next one is P20-12920, CLP, uh, installation of one rear dormer and a loft conversion at 14 Crows Grove, Bradley Stoke. So bear with me a minute. So how can we have a more button door and a loft? 
It's really flat. Is are they actually <clears throat> making it taller? Move in it. Move it up the combined plan. Is what is here at the moment, and that is what's proposed. It's quite shallow, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, right, Andy. Yeah. Uh, a little bit, a little bit of shallow. Almost actually be quite comfortable, but I can't imagine there's going to be a great deal of room under the front of the house. Yeah. Interesting to know where they're going to put the staircase up to it as well. Probably show that one. See that one on the uh, application. The staircase. The staircase is there. Yes. It's yeah. basically in one of the other rooms, isn't it? It does look quite a low ceiling because I mean, I know obviously I guess the people aren't necessarily to size, but um, could be a child's bedroom. Yeah. No, it looks like he's sitting in a room. <laughs> well, mm. <laughs> Chap's holding it up with his head. <laughs> <laughs> there is um, no, it's been on the system since the 31st of July and there's no comments from anybody on the system involved at all. But nobody people, not many people look into that, Sharon, that's also another. Pardon? Unless it's been sent to the neighbours for comments, nobody look into it. That's an issue. I mean, uh, the comment that neighbours would, would have been consulted anyway, and there's no comments from them. So, mm. yes, yeah, so that's what's supposed. And, and also, they've got to go through building rates, so anything about like head height or anything like that. Oh, yeah, yeah that would work. Yeah. yeah, so I don't think it's. If that's how they want to live, then, you know, and no neighbours. But we can actually make a query. Okay, we would like to actually regarding the building regulations as, as such, you know, accept it, providing accepting it, but what about the building regulations, the height, you know, the in futuristic, what they're planning to do. I know there are issues with dormers on other properties, which they want to not be so so on that one, for example, the roof line, the peak of the roof, the roof top line normal level, which the past have been a bit particular about that, and it is across the back of the property. Again, it's very blocky. It's the back of the property, isn't it? Yeah. It is the back. I mean, yeah, it would. Uh, there must be, um, let me just see if I can zoom in. I get that they've mentioned it. Because you can't put a character back. There's nothing else on the photographs that showed any other dormers in that area. I mean, historically, we had issues with that dormer in Percy Drive, which was very similar to this. Yeah, so I was thinking yeah. about Andy. There is. Oh, there is the area. Sharon, I cannot read the number on the right. So. No, oh. no, no. Okay. okay. Actually, yeah, that one, I think that's 1900. But I think there is a minimum of 220, right? Yeah, that's 1.9, isn't it? Yeah, so it's less than the minimum requirement. I think that there's a requirement. It has to be 220, 2 meters and 20 centimeters. Yeah, if you look down here on the one below, that's 220, but that one isn't... I don't think that's 20 centimeters. Yeah, it's very shallow. So. 2.175. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one other thing, Darren, um, uh, as well as Chair, uh, what the point, uh, Andy pointed out a valid thing, because it's, if it's out, out of keeping with the street plan, or actually in other houses there, I think we can actually be on that. What's 1.9 meters and inches? Well, I was just going to say that um, it says installation of one rear dormer and lock conversion. It doesn't say, despite the man who's holding it up, it doesn't say 
that it's going to be used as a bedroom. It does say, it says, thing, I think, it says on the suite by the side of that man. Oh, that, oh dear me, then. That's not all the information that I looked at earlier. I guess so. And that, those people walking up there, it wasn't, they weren't in the application that I looked at earlier. I think it looked like a cheap conversion. What, the combined plan? I mean, that one. The, uh, oh, no, no, that's that not that one, but the one with the stairs, yeah, that one. All right. Oh. Yeah, that, that is on there, because I've obviously got it from the South Coast website. So, oh, right, okay. Yeah, layout and section plan. Volume, volume calculator. Can, can, uh, Sharon, just can you actually also uh, show the street plan, street image, so that we know how that buildings are, are the houses in that street? That's literally six foot four, so six foot four high inside. Wow. Can't do much jumping up and down in that one then. Well, I, I'd have an inch clearance. I'm, I'm six three, so you'd end up having to bend over and hit your head on the smoke detectors and everything. Yeah, so <laughs> this one here, so there are no yeah. 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 anywhere we might so, Because looking at it, I feel we are actually creating a, a havoc if we are actually allow from our side. It's not depending upon the South Coast what they want to do. Because in keeping with the street plan, it's better to actually reject it. Because no other houses has got that kind of. Is that is that okay to? Um, yeah, I was giving you that. Yeah. yeah, you can object to out of keeping with the street thing. Yes, yeah. yeah. Basically saying it doesn't fit in with mm -hmm. yeah, the surrounding. Just by pointing out, we think that the proposed new room doesn't meet building requirements. Okay, that's a good idea. Well, as it is saying. Building regulations. Because um, I thought, because Andy pointed out that, so and I thought it's relevant here. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And if you remember, we, we uh, objected on Percy Drive on the same grounds, and they still let them get away with it. So even though we went through planning appeal and everything, didn't we? Yeah. yeah. I wonder what's the point of this meeting? We might have just let them decide themselves. I know, because you are, you are voicing comments and they do listen to us sometimes and what well, so the Thursday was a cure in the month. <laughs> so <laughs> objection out of keeping with the street thing and the height of the lock conversion. What was it saying? Could um, be breach of building regulations. Yeah, it could be breach. Internal height I would suggest. Okay, and the internal height of lock conversion could be in breach of building regulation. Yep. 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 Okay. Have we proposed that? that Tom? I think originally was from Andy. I want to give him the credit because he actually originally pointed out. I'm happy to support it. Andy? Yeah. And Tom, no second day councillors. Can you take a vote on that please? Five in favour. Against. Extension. Oh, we got sorry, June. Unanimous. Was it unanimous or? Unanimous. Yeah. Yeah. This next one, I couldn't actually read the actual plan. Yeah. 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 P21, 3, 2, 3, 4, PNI, PN1, sorry, Learn at Moonsborne Road, final notification of the intention to install a new 20 metre column supporting flip antennas together with ground based equipment, cabinets, and ancillary development there too. So, give me a second. Thank 
Okay. I'm not sure whether you want me to open all of the 20 odd documents, but I can show you where it is. Some years ago, I thought these things were only passed out for comment and not for approval, straight non approval. Well, this is prime notification. Right. Yeah. So basically, yeah. they're saying they're going to do it unless Southwest tell them they can't. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so it is. Well, with a normal application, they're asking if they can do it, but with a prior notification, essentially, they're saying we can do it unless you come back and say no, we can't, which is slightly different. Yeah, mm -hmm. sort of. So it is actually in this part of on this part of the roundabout. You can see where that bit is there, and I can show you. Um, what, where is that roundabout? That's, the, that's um, Winterbourne Road. So it is just taking this one out, which is already there, and putting a new one in. What is the image? IT coverage my house, then? Yeah, I think it's a 5G one, isn't it? Yeah, I, you, yeah. Okay. Um, I can you. Any comments from residents? Uh, no, there isn't. So if I show you, please. So. Residents um, being you know sort of notification go because I live just by there. And, uh, mm -hmm. There's only a certain like they put they put like almost a compass point in the middle and then they do like a circle round so everybody within that bit would be oh. within that sort of area that we can come and go. And yeah, so I've just gone upside down to the other guy. So that's that's what people actually look like. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what is there at the moment, and this is what they're aiming to put in, and that is what it will look like. So they're taking out that one there, which is dotted, and putting in this one here like that. Not at all. Mark again. Mm -hmm. oh, this is great. Yep. Three mobile. And everything everywhere. Oh. That's, that's three, is it? Yeah, it looks like there's three on the plans, and then the, to the right, the, the turquoise logo is the E. So it's a shared site between the three and the E by the look of it. Uh, over on here. Okay. Three. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, I feel. <clears throat> Unless it's a, there is a strong objection from the residents there, I propose accepting it, you know, because it's actually a development part of our It has been in the system since the 3rd of August and there's nothing from anybody, so, yeah. I don't think it's not, because I think even if we rejected it, it sounds like a very, very jaded view. view. <laughs> <laughs> very honest. Probably right, though. <laughs> you can't do. Yeah, yeah. So I, I propose then, you know, to accept it. The phone pose no objection. Is there a second up? Awesome. You're all benefits. Yeah. And <laughs> secondly, councillors, do you take a vote please all those in favour? Five in favour. I'm just amazed to learn it's green. Against? Abstention? One extension, thank you very much. Because I moved to bring years ago, I had to move them in the two years to get reception over there. So that's why, <laughs> and that's why they're putting a thing in It's useless, I've got a phone used to phone, perhaps, so I guess. <laughs> right, the next one, I'll leave you a second. I can't remember the random start. <laughs> <laughs> I think the longest breakfast was about three years ago. 
Right, the next one is P twenty one three seven three eight F, which is erection of single storey side extension to form additional living accommodation at one 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 Meadow Way. Is it a big extension? Meadow Way. Uh, it is on the side here. It's a very tight one. Hmm. I can show you the what can the existing and proposed elevation. You can see that one. Okay. Side elevation. Uh, Side extension like that. I should have opened all the documents at the same time. Like they're nice straight lines on their plans. I know, I feel that as well. I feel you see that nice packet. Okay, so that this is what's proposed. Because you've got quite a big site that is within there. Right. Um, yeah, and nobody's overlooking it. Mm -hmm. so one day you work done, remind me to go to a different architect. <laughs> no, no, you might be uh, really into these. Well, yeah, is a you know, population thing. So they're putting a utility room and a playroom. Yeah, I think it looks lovely. I do. That's um, my question is how much size they have in the block plan. If you look under the block plan, I think it's a tight skew. So that's the issue. I like I like developments. No, I'm favour of that. But mm. uh, so I don't think it's going to impact anywhere. It doesn't want to be actually just on that land. There's still a gap there for the to. Move no objection, Chairman. Yeah, so Michael okay. proposed no objection. Um, okay. And that's all seconded. Okay. <coughs> on that one, please, councillors. Those in favour? I in favour. Against? Abstentions? Okay. One against. One against. You're against. Okay. Thank you very much. That's right. That's true. Thank you. That's the legal way. Yeah, absolutely. Right, we had, we had a large development a few years ago, and this girl just had to kind of render everything flat. It looked like everything was on top of one another. Then the actual applicant had to come in and explain it to us, like it was all curved in the space. It, it was so bizarre. <laughs> I must no, admit the, the best ones do tend to be the 3D plan because you definitely get a really good con concept with the 3D diagram. Yeah, yeah. and some of those are great, mm -hmm. aren't they? But it, it can make or break the yeah. uh, planning application, seeing what it looks like. Right, next one, please. Right, the next one is P2103 Q, which So the next one is P213741 PBR, the erection of single storey rear extension to form additional living accommodation at 134 Oak Tree Crescent. Yeah. It is this half here on its own. I think this is one where the neighbour is actually in favour, isn't it? It's saying he's in favour. Yeah, but I did put that one there. This one is there. Council G comment. Neighbour, fully support it and have no objection. It's only for the new property. So that is what is there at the moment. So. One of the boxes named the present set up all in the room. Oh, that looks really good. It's in shape and size, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, it's there, what's their piece to be done? They're all in tile and everything. It's very... Uh... Right, so that's 
So yeah, they're going from that and with the conservatory on there to that going all the way across. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. So those nice two not going out too far. No, I don't think so. No, I think it's the same as the yeah, same, uh, it's like the same yeah. as the conservatory there. Possibly a tad more. I can zoom in and see what it says. Yeah, three and a half metres. Not sure whether it's a measurement on the 15 metres. Yeah. So that's not impacting anything, is it? No. I think you need to agree. Yeah. Somebody proposing no objection then? I'll say no objection. Right. Harry proposed no objection. Is there a second for that? Absolutely. Michael seconded, thank you. Councillors, can you take a vote on that, please? All those in favour? Lovely, thank you very much. That one. Ooh. And the last one is P21 or 729. 196 the bluebells demolition of existing conservatory erection of single story rear extension to provide additional living accommodation now this is absolutely definitely no increase at all yeah let's look at that One on the side here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's in the rear side. Okay. But the conservatory is going. Nothing on the coming to the view. So you mm. can see the conservatory there. Interesting buildings. <laughs> So that is what is there at the moment, with the conservatory, and that is what's proposed. Chair, yeah, because it's the same thing what we've done for 17 Meadow Way. I have an issue with that because it's coming to the boundary, but as there was already a conservatory, I give the doubt, and that place more attention. 
Sorry, I'm not quite sure I understood what you were saying there. Uh, Tom said because the um, it comes right up to the boundary, there could have been an issue like we had for one of your previous applications, but because it is literally just replacing where the yeah. conservatory, he was in favour of. Oh, yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, it's a good So does that mean your your um your proposed yeah. projection plan? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And for that to be answered. Thank you, Andy. <laughs> the answer was, can you take a vote on that? All those in favour, no objection. Mm -hmm. eh? yeah. Thank you. Unanimous. And we'll everything here. Right. Yeah, right. Well, okay, so um we've got those going to work with the scope of planning by meeting up with elsewhere. Nine point one, fair country county fruits. Patch rate, metro bus extension, gypsy patch, names, so called the liaison group updates. Right, so um, you have you did have the update in your agenda pack. Um, there was a meeting, a Microsoft Teams meeting on Monday. So the only other information, the update from Network Ray is that they've completed the snagging work on the new bridge and they've also waterproofed it. And put anti graffiti, uh, they're going to paint it with anti graffiti paint. So they may current, they brought forward some of the works to do with utilities and culvert work, which were going to be done after the bridge moved, but they can now do it before. The roadway for the movement of the bridge is in the process of being done, and there will be some overnight bridge works for three nights. Um, the Hatchet Road bus stop works start on the 14th of September for three months. So there will be two-way traffic lights um, functioning during off-peak times. And we had notification come through that today. So that is now, the details of that are now on our website on the Gypsy Patch Lane page. Um, they will be digging some trial pits on Gypsy Patch Lane to identify some utilities linked to the tree replanting. And that will take place sometime in September or the last about a month. There won't be any impact on the road traffic whilst they're doing those works, um, as that's mainly on the grass of the ridges. That's where we are for now. I must say I'm very disappointed with the way South Gloucestershire have actually been uh, carrying out the works in this area. They are doing a lot. They're doing a lot, and it doesn't seem always to be as a result of joined up thinking. Mm -hmm. Because the signage on which bit of road is closed is sometimes contradictory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost as though they're wishing us to become an island. <laughs> You're here to go in and out, yeah, it'd be like in a bubble in our own luxury <laughs> Moving on to 9.2, Stand up to the BC phone box moving every road. 
So you had this in your agenda pack as well. So if you can cast your mind back to probably this time last year, we managed to rescue the the um, phone box at Pear Tree Road from being removed because we argued that it was in an area of high retail and employment usage and also there was then potential domestic need for anonymous calls in the case of domestic use. So they, um, it's been saved, but now they're obviously reconsulting it again. So their com the comment from VT is that there's a great outdoor network coverage. The call log has been reviewed due to the previous concerns from the parish council for need for domestic use victim. There has been one call made to a free phone number that no longer appears to be served. Um, Not much we can say about that really then, is it? Um, no. But if they are minded to remove it, then we can adopt it for a defibrillator. So that might be something that we could ask our force to do, and then we could look at putting a defibrillator in that location. The one by the Beaufort Arms in Stoke Gifford has been adopted as a toy library. Yeah, you can't do that. That's an old-fashioned one, isn't it? But the one at Pear Tree is a modern metallic one, but you can adopt the modern metallic ones for defibrillators, but not for toy libraries and that sort of thing. But yeah. My brilliant yeah. idea, Sharon. Uh, that is a brilliant idea. I accept that, and uh, we would like to actually propose that, yes. We won't have one in the north of the town, have we? Um, no, not really. There is one at Doctor's Surgery, but it's not a public access one that I'm aware of. So, um, Definitely. I, I only thought is if we say, well, yeah, we want to adopt it, that's we're saying we don't want it as a phone box. So <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? That one really is it's like a conflict. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost our argument anyway, haven't we? I mean, we had the argument last year, and one. Or literally one phone call to a free phone number, there's not much we can argue against that. No, that's very true, actually. Andy. I look at it, if you look at all five telephone numbers on this report, every single one of them has had an enormous downturn in court making to social inbox. Mm. So if this is the like the play that we're playing with figures and mm. the numbers and 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 Oh, so we want to use statistics to make to actually give a worse figure than what it looks like. I don't know on that one. You've got a point, haven't you, on that? Yeah. Because that just seems so weird that all five telephone boxes. I mean, even the fourth one there. Oh, but then you could argue that that is why they're revisiting these five because there has been such a downturn. Because these are the only five they're revisiting. You see what I mean? It's not like this is just five out of. This is the um, in the last six months, so they won't have had that data in the last consultation. Yeah, well, if you look on the, the, that one before, that gives you, so the average calls per month in the six months until May 2020, but the per hour one was five. The same time in the last consultation, the average calls per month was 56. But this time it's only five. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, in the last consultation, they won't have had the data up until March 2020. No, so but they, they, were, they were going on with data from like the previous year, so you know I mean. That's what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah so they're they're saying, saying, yeah, the average average reduction. Reduction. Um, in the last consultation. Mm -hmm. Now, that was over a 10 year period, and your average, your average is going to change. Then you have the average calls per month in six months until March 2020, it could look very different if the periods were not comparable. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's very odd to me that oh, I agree. I agree. they all had a high consultation rate, or so it used to rate, mm -hmm. and then now there's a such a downturn, you look at all of those and say, well, it doesn't make any sense as to why they're even there. Well, exactly, it's a massive coincidence mm -hmm. that all of them on the, you know, on the Cost of having them removed are uh, all suddenly dropped to such a Why should they have dropped so suddenly over the six month period? It's a question, isn't it? Mm. Is there, have we got any teeth in this? I mean, does it matter what we say? Well, when we said we didn't want it removed last year, South Lost agreed with us and fought the case with BT, and BT agreed to keep it. 
but then a year later they're now revisiting it again. So, so could we then sort of say to uh, Gloss that we want to um, we want to have some kind of like um, review of the figures because there is, you know, as Ben said, and I completely agree, there's something not quite believable about these figures. Is there something we could ask Jack the Cresson to take up? The seeming randomness of the stroke and accuracy mm. of the figures. <laughs> Well, I think we could go back on the consultation and go and say, you know, shouldn't we be... It just seems to lack a little bit of transparency with the average yeah, calls to the last mm -hmm. consultation. I mean, we can go back and start going over the previous consultation and finding out the exact dates of figures mm -hmm. when together. But in terms of they report, they just hand out to the public... Uh, to the public... To the public whole. Um, would be quite. When you look at um, Oxen Report, that's gone down mm -hmm. 1968 to 18. I mean, that's like a massive. Yeah, know, that one does actually, if you look on the, um, the comment from BT, it does, if you look on the side there, that one specifically, it does say payphone is in a dirty, poor state, significant drop in call volume. So they've acknowledged that. Well, so it hasn't, yeah, but you, you, you could easily say that um, uh, it presumably was also in a dirty, straight, poor state when the 168 people mm -hmm. uh, were using yeah. it. So it could have been in such a state that they refused to use it. So there must have been a reason. Yeah. Because the state but, of the one as well sort of about significant dropping from what yeah. Well, it's actually that Ben's point here. Yeah. yeah. All. But uh, one of the things is that belongs to Patrick, is it? Probably old Patrick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I know they, they know they all belong to different areas of It's just saying that. Uh, yeah, I understood. I understood the point. I understood. Yeah. Yes, you could probably take two months out of the statistics because when COVID started, what, February? So February and March. Yeah, March. Yeah, well, and it does fail until March 2020. So, mm. realistically, mm. so I think my personal view is that we should um, we should ask South, you know, make these points to South Gloucestershire and ask them to um, go back to BT and say that we want some further. Investigation on the numbers. Justification. Justification. So when's the next planning environment going to be? We've yes. got we've got to reply by first of September, of course. So we can't. We need to make a obviously a comment on that. Well, I think it, that is that is our um, unless anyone um, disagrees. I think that's our comment is that we you know we would like from. Um, so we sort of of object to the removal of the. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And we have not also, for what reason? Um, do, you, do you want for the same reasons as you had previously? About the so I, I think the reason changes because it, it's it's almost like an objection, but not really, because we don't, looking at the figures in reference to this, you can't make heads or tails of it in terms of like what. They, they put forward. A statement of statistics that demonstrates that these five boxes overall are, have a significant amount of frequency, therefore, are they real significant use of all? Yeah. But we're, I, I'm kind of saying, I don't think I can make an assessment based on that because I don't have a clear understanding of the comparison between last time and this time to then justify that what's been said to me in terms of the six, the six, month, use of, six month usage up to March 2020 mm. is actually justifiable. Mm -hmm. So, almost what I'm trying to say. I want the consultation we present it to actually then make a comment on it. Mm. Because I can't agree or disagree with what they've said based on statistically what's been put forward in my opinion. I, I seem to remember, going back when we looked at this last time, the average calls per month in that last consultation of 56, they've got that down as per month. I thought the figure was about 56 for a year, because I know it's quite low. 
Yeah, I think you're probably right on that, Andy. They've got their figures mixed up in, in, in their columns because that that makes sense to me, and that average would be um, that far off. So that would be average calls per year in the yeah. last consultation, potentially, not per month. Not okay. Yeah. Yeah, and which were, I think, actually, up, I'm pretty sure it was about, was it not about? It was about five or six that worked out per month last time, wasn't it? That was, yeah. It's just that that figure just oh. sticks in my mind at 56. Yeah. The whole 12 months. And then if you were to times the number produced by five over a 12 month period, you're there. You get the same number. Yeah. Well, that means it hasn't got. But actually, potentially, if that is correct, that's South Ross's mistake, not BT's mistake, because this is their document. And yeah. quite likely when they put this table together, if that is incorrect, it's not BT trying to give us false information. It's no, 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 South Ross writing the wrong figure then. I personally would propose that the objection to this needs to be as the data provided between last consultation and this consultation is not clear. Mm -hmm. um, and we believe, or would like clarification, whether the, the consultation period from the, the figures given the consultation column from last time is for a yearly period, not a monthly period, stated at the top of the column. And also, if we've got an issue or if we've got a concern about um, uh, domestic abuse victims, um, you know, making a comment that great outdoor network coverage exists, I don't think cuts it really. You know, I mean, if you're in a situation where um, you've got um, a, a violent partner, you know, the idea that you're going to be able to leave the house with your mobile phone, you know, actually not don't you? And not everybody's got mobile phones, well, and quite often in a domestic abuse situation, the person who's had their phone taken away from them well, yes. by their by their partner yeah. their partner yeah. or so like potentially yeah yeah no I wouldn't say so okay I so think. the suggestion is that the, we object to the removal of this box as the previous reason for keeping the box it's your wallet it's the previous comment made by the council is still valid it is still valid I would like to see clarification on the figures presented. We would like to receive clarification. As we double the accuracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of the average calls. You know, the previous consultation period of call duration. Yeah, that the accuracy would be comparison. I would like to receive clarification of the average calls detailed in the table. It'd be worth digging out the last consultation documents from the minutes, wouldn't it? Have a look. Yeah, mm -hmm. detailed in the table linked to the average calls. Um, Per month. So we object to the removal of this box as the previous reason for keeping the box is still valid and we would like to receive clarification of the average calls detailed in the table linked to the average calls per month in the last consultation. Does that make sense? It sounds a bit garbled. So we object to the removal of this box as the previous reason for keeping the box is still valid. So we're all right on that. Yeah. And then you could probably further seek clarification of the statistics. Well, hang on, hang on. Just people come up with these amazing things and then we further seek clarification of the statistics. Oh, all right. uh, and we just have on two steps, just like that is brilliant, yeah. I thought. We further, further, yes. further seek clarification of the statistics, did you say? Yeah, within the document. Actually, I can confirm that that's the number for the entire year. That was the year, was it? Yeah, yeah, 
it was in the minutes uh, of a meeting from October, I think. Yeah, yeah I thought it was. Yeah, the minutes say 56 calls made over the past 12 months. Yeah. Over yeah. the past 12 months. So yeah, it was for the year. Right, okay. So and also, I mean, it's a possibility, isn't it? I mean, you can't predict how many people are going to be suffering domestic abuse. Well, I think, to be honest, what that man showed, that was, well, what Tom Pratt just said, that man means that's null and void. Because they made a statement based on what they provided on the table, and the table is fundamentally wrong because of how they, how they presented the course from the last consultation yeah. period. Because if you times five by twelve, you get a figure which nearly the same as yeah. yeah. so, so the usage is has not down to her. Yeah. It's been a, it's been an inaccuracy in the presentation of the statistics. Right, okay, so we just the clarification, we just get rid of that one. Right, so we further seek clarification of the statistics included in the document as the 50, 50, 50. That previous, previous documentation shows significantly different figures or shows I wouldn't go point out the actual error because you need to say that what's quoted is being average calls per month in the last consultation is actually average calls per year mm -hmm. in last consultation, okay. which then means the overall usage of those phone boxes. It has mm -hmm. not gone down. It's not had a down. Mm -hmm. It's in the stock channel as the average calls per month. Um, <laughs> average calls per month of in mass consultation mm -hmm. column. Last consultation. Column, yeah. is actually the average calls per year in last consultation. It's actually the, what, sorry, did you say average? average calls per year in last consultation. Is that correct, Pat? Yes, uh, in the last 12 months. And that was in, in yeah. our uh, minutes from uh, the planning committee back in October, 20-something of October. Yeah, okay. So, and this calls into question the um the comments um as this is well yeah it, it, it makes the whole consultation void because the presentation of figures is incorrect based on, based on, on the law yeah yeah based. So this is void the the consultation as is based on flawed data. Yeah. Right. I will read this back to you. Okay, right. So, we object to the removal of this box as the previous reason for keeping the box is still valid. So that's the first one. We further seek clarification of the statistics included in this document as the average calls per month in the last consultation. If I put that in the British comment. Previous consultation. Ooh, the I've got the document, the original one. So yeah, this is the last consultation is what it says in the column. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, that's that's the consultation column is actually the average calls per year in the last consultation. Yeah, that's what the original. Yeah, document. this is the yeah. calls into question the entire consultation as it is based on flawed data. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Good teamwork. <laughs> yeah, can I suggest that but can actually, I just then um, sorry. Can I suggest we actually copy that to our four South Gloucestershire councillors? Yeah. Um, and then do we want to put in a comment with if you do remove it, we want to adopt it? No. Or do you want to put that in? No, because we don't want We're preempting them. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, that's what I'm yeah, worried about. Yeah, we're defeating our own point. Yeah. yeah. Shooting ourselves in the foot. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Just seems like someone should pick us up again and come back. Oh, sure. <laughs> 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 so, can we have a proposal on that? Thank you, Professor. Okay. Proposed and uh, then seconded. 
captured and we take a vote on that please. Lovely, thank you very much. Yep. So you have this in your agenda pack. I hope you've all read it and inwardly digested it. <laughs> Thank you. <Mom. laughs> right. I did wonder actually what is going to be what, what it, who does everybody think our approach should be? Because I know it says that you can feed back. Um, but do we intend to feed back as a council? Well or this is what you're deciding now oh. that's on the agenda. Do you want to do you want to, because the closing date for feedback is the 15th of October, so potentially you could have a couple of councillors tasked to go away, look at it, make comments, and then come back to the next planning environment committee meeting for discussion and decision, rather than ploughing through 26 questions now. What's the feeling? I mean, this is another one. Is it going to? I mean, it's a consultation for me. Is it going to add any weight to anything? Well, yes, it will, because NAP will obviously, as our umbrella organisation, will deal directly with government in respect of, of this and it's the government that put the white paper out it's not now that put it out so yes obviously now would be more than happy with on the comment that we would like to make because obviously they seek the views of parish and town councils yeah. to yeah. feed back to government so yes it is one who is our representative to our alka Pardon? So we saw a representative to Alka. Uh, yes. But I mean, at the local council, so the local association would be responding anyway, but as town council, we can respond for now. No, no, my question, mother, you are, I'm not, I'm asking a question. Who is our representative to Alka? Me okay. and Tony. Okay, that's right. Is it? You're part of the planning of town council or the Al Council? I'm not sure what name. You know, the Avon Local Council Association. Who is yeah. our Are you part of that? Usually you're the council school. Yeah, it's Tony, Griffith, and myself are on the Alpha, and then myself, Tony, and Franklin are on the South Cross Area Alpha Group. Okay. Do you feel like the questions are aimed more towards under advice, like in the advice? Well, I think in respect of, of sort of Reggie Stone, we are we're probably quite unique, I would think, in the fact that there's, we've got nowhere to expand to because <coughs> we are on the edges of everything really and a lot of places obviously like other towns where the local authorities then try to build masses of houses oh, on the edge of the town and, and that's why they have neighbourhood plans but Lovely within ourselves all we have really is piecemeal land for somebody trying to build another house in their garden or you know what I mean there isn't there isn't any land so a lot of the questions potentially don't necessarily directly impact on us. South Northamptonshire and Daventry have both put uh, major estates right on their borders with Northampton so that they get the money and Northampton gets the problems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So 
So do a couple of councils want to sit down and look through this? Or what do you want to do? You got any volunteers? Yeah. I mean, there okay. are several well, hundred. Well, some of them are, but the first few are, aren't they? Now to represent so many diverse and different councils that our views will be just a drop in the bucket. What are the options then? The options are, as you suggest, two people sit down and look at it. What's the other options? That we go, that we just have it, read it, and then I'm guessing that as individuals, you can probably comment on the white paper if you want to, because the white paper itself, you've got to remember that this is only like the synopsis. The white paper itself is 60 pages long. <laughs> Yeah, it is a short one actually. Um, so, I mean, you can actually, you can reply as individuals. So, councillors rather than replying as a, yeah, so you can respond through their website if you're minded to, rather than, so not through now. Obviously, what I sent out to you is just the briefing paper that came through from now if we wanted to respond to now, which they would then pass on. But equally, if councillors wanted to read through the document and then reply to it as individuals, that's equally just the yeah. mm -hmm. relevant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is quite often what we do when we have, like, if there's large things like this, we quite often say to councillors, you know, we want to respond as individuals. Mm -hmm. So what about if we take a vote on each option? Does anybody have to? Sorry? If we want to ask them which it normally is made, to do that, don't we? Yeah, but Terry's saying the two options is either a couple of councillors sit down, look at this, come back to the next meeting, or councillors just respond as individuals. That's the like, two options, really. Is there any, are there any volunteers for the option that um, two councillors sit down and go through it? Let's have a look in there. You might know then by the looks of it. So shall I just send the white paper through to all of you and you can respond as individuals if you would like to? Oh, Andy, did you want to say something? No, no, I think that's probably the best way of doing it is to look, read through and respond individually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So, can we have a proposal for that? Andy, can you proposing that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Is there a second of that? Tom, first hand up. Oh, sorry, Tom. You got your hand up. You're muted, Tom. I was on the phone, I was Is anybody going to second that one? I can second that. Sorry? I can second that. Okay then, Ben seconding that. So, councillors can vote if you're in favour of, of, I'll send you the information out and then if you want to have a look through it and respond to individuals. Those in favour? One, two, three, four, in favour. Five in favour. Against? Abstention? Abstention. One abstention. Thank you very much. Okay. I'll send the document out to you then and how you can uh, uh, respond to it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, Will we have to related to compensation? No, no. Uh, point 11, to deal with the following common actions to matter. 11.1, to approve bills and direct debits to payment. You have that in your agenda pack. I apologise, it's very small writing. <laughs> I've got one or two questions. Um, okay. Um, I just wondered, um, there's a series of um, 
payment to BG Business. Yes. Some of which are on the same day. Yes. What, what's that? That's one? British Gas. So that's electricity and gas for all our sites. So each of them oh. are separate. So oh. like so individually. Yes. That's one. Yeah. yeah. So that's why there's lots all on the same day. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, South Gloucestershire Council. That's the rate. Oh right. Okay. So it's individual. Yeah. Um, so the is X branch Gloucestershire Council. Um, what's the ET? ET, that's the um, uh, website, um, website, email. Mm -hmm. And there's a, an entry called charges, almost from the end, 33, 26. That's bank charges. Oh. Um, okay, that's all my, oh, um, but I can't. That's, um, we have to pay a certain amount each month for, like, the card machine. Oh, okay. and that's, oh, the only one other thing I wanted to ask you, is this, is this one that we spent nearly £2,000 a month on dog, like dog waste being collections? Yes, that's our plus empty or our dog waste being so that's a quarterly charge, yeah. Okay. All right, that's all of my questions, thank you. We have a proposal. Seconder, I think uh, the uh, Thank you. So then the payers will have a seconder for the uh, payment schedule. Andy, thank you very much. Um, and finally, the oh, council will be taking a vote on that. Is there a favour of the uh, payment schedule? Tom? Lovely, thank you very much. It's unanimous. Uh, okay. Well, to confirm the date and time of the next meeting, Wednesday, the 23rd of September, at 7 o'clock in the morning. Thank you very much. You, you too. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. And, and, and the, well, I won't see you come on board there tomorrow, but I'm very, very excited to come in and do the payments. That's marvellous. Thank you. Yeah, I'll we'll see you by half 12. That's lovely. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.